Hey everybody, Jake here, and today we're going to take a look at the Conklin Word Gauge. Um, this is a fairly new acquisition for me, I've only had it for a few weeks now, but it actually already made my top 5 pens list of 2018, and for good reason. Um, this is an astounding pen, and I didn't find it until recently that I got it for a really good price. So let's go ahead and we'll jump in, we'll take a look at what I like, what I'm neutral towards, and what I dislike about the Conklin Word Gauge. All right, onto the size comparison. So here we have the Conklin Word Gauge next to the Conklin Duraflex or Durograph, same size, the Twisby 580 All or 580, same size, and the Lamy 2000. So you can see um, these are kind of medium size pens to me, at least. Um, so it fits right in here. It's pretty much the exact same size as the Duraflex or Duraflex, maybe a tad bit shorter, it's hard to tell. A little bit shorter than the 580 and again about the same length as the Lamy 2000 and here it is uncapped so you can see uncapped it's it's slightly longer than the Duraflex um, just a little bit especially in the grip area you get probably another millimeter or two um, it's very close to the 580 in length the 580 might be a millimeter longer and it is roughly the same size as the Lamy 2000 maybe a little bit longer because of the nib but again, it kind of stays in that same similar size range with all these other pens. All right, on to what I like about the pen. So very first thing is actually going to be the nib and the flow. Um, these are just fantastic. Honestly, the, the nib is it's surprisingly springy. It's very, very smooth, especially for the width that you get out of it, which you'll see in the writing sample. Um, it's a number six size nib as well. So you can swap it out with other nibs um, especially you know Conklin they have a ton of different nibs you can just swap it out with one of those if you want to including the flex nibs if you want to put one of those on there so the the ability to switch it is very very easy and it's, it's readily available the flow is very wet and it's very consistent I haven't had any skips with this nib at all it's performed very, very well, and I honestly, that's one of my favorite parts about this pen is just the writing experience is amazing, especially for a steel nib. This is probably one of my favorites. The build quality and the materials used are, are pretty good as well. Um, Solidity-wise, this thing feels like a tank. Like, it feels very, very durable. Um, even the, the plastic uh, piston window. It, it feels nice. This whole thing, it feels it feels very good. Um, there's a bit of weight to the pen. I believe the piston parts are metal. I'm not sure. And I haven't tried disassembling this yet, so we're just going to hold off on that. Um, but I may, you know, do that later. If so, I'll do a video about it. But it, it feels very, very solid. Um, the materials used are pretty nice. It's, um, for the most part, it's, it's plastic. Um, some of it has a faux carbon fiber finish, which you can see here. Looks very, very good. Um, I actually have um, some carbon fiber knives as well. And while this, it feels somewhat similar, it, it's just a little bit different. It's hard to describe. But it's it's very nice pattern. It looks almost exactly like carbon fiber. Um, there are a few parts that are askew, which you can kind of tell. But it, it's, it's difficult to find from a distance. It, it looks very, very good. Um, the rest of it, apart from the plastic piston window and the matte carbon fiber um is like a matte black plastic as well a lot of it and then you have two um kind of sort of metallic coated accents you have the clip and you have this little metal band here which um i'll definitely come back to in a bit but overall it's a very well designed pen and I, I like it a lot um the piston window comes in a few different colors that you can find there's blue there's red and there's orange orange being my personal favorite but um, I got a really good deal on this one, so I wasn't going to pass it up, and I like the blue as well anyway. The design is actually based off of a very old design for Conklin. It started in the 1930s, um, which is their word gauge line. So there are a bunch of different designs of this pen, and it's extremely old. It's almost 100 years now. You know, it's like, what, 89 years old? <clears throat> this year, at least. So it's, it's an iconic design for them, or at least the name is. And the design of this pen looks uh, a bit more modern than the older pens, for sure. But it's, it's definitely there. And you can still find those pens on places like eBay or, you know, any vintage pen dealers may have them as well. And Conklin has some information on their website that you can go and read about that. But the design is very nice. Um, it's a, Again, it's a classic design, but they've kind of modernized it a bit. And I feel it really, really, really um, adds to it and makes it a much more compelling pen to me, at least. 
One of the iconic things about this pen and the reason it's named the word gauge are these little markers right here. You can see it says 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, and 5,000. That's a rough estimate for your word count based on the ink level. So if I sit mine here, it looks like I've got about 3,500 words left or so in this fill. Um, it's very easy to get a full fill on this pen, I will say that, but the, the word gauge name comes from those numeral markings on the piston there. Speaking of the piston, it's it's pretty nice. Um, it holds a ton of ink. I know it doesn't quite look like it, but it it holds a, a very, very large amount of ink. It's very wide, and it's, it's a great capacity. I haven't, you know, I, I don't have to worry about running out with this thing. It's, it's amazing, honestly. It's right up there with Twisby um, as far as the ink capacity goes. And you can see here next to a 580, it's pretty similar, a little bit wider, though. So... It may actually hold either the same or a little bit more, I'm not sure. I wasn't able to find an ink capacity measurement for this, but it's pretty nice. And the piston operation is pretty smooth. Um, it's the second knob back here. You can twist that, and it will move the piston up and down. It's There are a few issues I have with the piston knob itself, but the, the mechanism inside works very, very well. And because of that capacity, I really don't have to worry about about it nearly as much as say a cartridge converter pen which makes you know is one of the reasons piston fillers are my favorite filling mechanism on to the neutral there's really only one thing here and that's the clip <clears throat> if i set the pen flat like this you can kind of see the clip is crooked that annoys me we'll come back to that but functionality wise um the clip is is pretty nice this is the main thing that has carried over from the vintage pens is this clip shape now I'm not a huge fan of it. However, I will say if you look at the older, more round-topped um, word gauges, the clip almost looks like the pen. Um, you can see kind of where the cap is and it goes down. I don't know if that's their intention or not, but I like it quite a bit. Um, you can just slide it down over you know, a shirt pocket or a pair of pants. I found that a little difficult, but it's not too bad. Alternatively, if you see how far back that little attachment point is set, you can just press this down and it will spring up. So you can press that to get a lot more ramp and very easily fit it over a pair of pants um, or you know anything really that is that wide. It has a very good amount of ramp um, when you press it down. With it being crooked, it's a little annoying, but the clip itself isn't too bad functionality-wise, but I'm not a big fan of the design or the implementation in this case. On to the dislike. Um, first thing up is the price. So I got this pen for a very, very good price. I picked this pen up for about $70. Um, there's a store that's just a couple hours away from me called Art Light. It's a fountain pen store in Atlanta. And they had a couple of these. They had a stub, a 1.1 millimeter stub, and this, which is a medium. I, of course, went for the medium. Um, <clears throat> but they had them for $70 a piece. I knew that I had heard they were on closeout. I just assumed since they had them for $70, that was the going rate. Um, so I did some research before I did this video. I tried to just, you know, um, I, I did the video more or less based off of that. I don't really base my videos too much off of price or I try not to. Um, but some that obviously some of that's going to leak in. So at $70, this pen is, it's amazing. It really, really is. Honestly, um, if this pen were $70, Twisby would need to watch out. They would seriously need to take a second look and add more value into their products, even though they're already astounding value for the money, um, this would kind of scare Twisby, to be honest. But it's not $70. Um, just a casual cursory glance around the internet for about five minutes. Um, I found this pen going on the cheap end for $130, and on the expensive end, a little over $200. This is not a $200 pen. At $130, I would say it's okay, but to be honest, um, unless you're really interested in the history or the novelty of the little word, like the letter markers, I, I would pick up a Lamy 2000. Um, it's about 150 bucks, and it's a gold nib. They both perform very, very well. They're both piston fillers. But I, I like the 2000 more. Um, I just do. It's, it's a slightly better writer. Um, the design's more my style, although this really isn't too far off. 
It's just that at $130, there's not... They don't have room for the errors that they made that I'm about to talk about. Um, at, 130, at $130 for a mass-produced steel nib pen that isn't some fancy-ass acrylic, they would really, really need to do something with this, and they just didn't. So, what are my real issues with this pen, then? It's the fit and finish. And it's not just one thing, it's several things. So... I mentioned the crooked clip. Um, if I push it all the way over this way, it'll kind of sit almost center. But if you bump it, it will sit very, very much off to the side and it annoys the heck out of me. Um, that's just an infuriating little clip issue. <clears throat> Not only that, but I'm gonna have to get a little closer for these. And I do pick apart these pens. You guys know this by now. So I noticed all this um, when I was writing notes for this video. You can see how askew the finial is there sitting off the cap. Now, if I turn it like this, it looks almost level. Dips a little bit over on that side. But like this, you can see it's tilted almost completely back off of the cap. And it sticks out this way a lot more. That That's that's annoying. I'm assuming it has some issue to do with the clip seating. But I'm not positive. And since we're up here, I'll go ahead and show you how the clip is crooked as well. Very, very annoying. Next thing I noticed, um, this little band right here. This is supposed to be the same color as the clip, but if you look right around here, you can see there's already spots of wear where the plating is coming off. It's a little bit hard to see on camera. Um, honestly, it's hard to see with the light hitting it is what it is. But they're, they're basically, it's a really dark metallic finish. It, they look almost like a, um, a matte black vanishing point nib, but the plating is coming off really bad right here on this ring. And you can kind of see it if I, oh, sorry. If I cover it up a little bit there, you can kind of see where it's silver instead of that darker color. That's annoying. And then the, the very, very last thing, or things here, um, where the carbon fiber stops and it goes this matte black path plastic, you have another kind of um, unevenness. On this side, it's very smooth. On this side, it's, it juts out, and you can kind of see that as I turn it as well. It's just that one spot. It's about half of it. So it seems like they're misaligning portions of this. And the last thing here is the piston knob. This is tightened all the way down, but there's still wiggle, and it's, it is also uneven. You can see it's going much more to this side, up at the top. So the fit and finish on this pen isn't astounding. And when you when you pick it up and you feel it just in your hand, if you don't if you're not a detail person, this is none of this is gonna affect you. Feels great. It really does. I, I love this pen. But there are a lot of fit and finish issues with it. And the only part that I've found that's actually well aligned is the little cap band right here um, that on the back says made in Italy. That is the only thing I have found that isn't misaligned on this pen and it's annoying um, because this pen is fantastic honestly if they put a gold nib on this pen or even a titanium nib and fix those fit and finish issues this could be a $200 pen all day long but it's not sub $100 I wouldn't even think about it I'd recommend this pen right now everyone go out and buy one if you can get one for under 100 bucks do it because they're they're really really good but net two, it's just not there. All right, and on to the writing sample. So I didn't mention this in the review, but this is a medium nib. Bit of a hard start there, probably where I've had it uncapped for so long during this review. Now, what honestly impressed me about this pen a lot is the the springiness of it, the flexibility that you can get out of it. Now, it is a steel nib, but um, I'll, I'll show you here. There's a lot, a lot of line variation. So if I do a reverse writing line here, a normal line, and align with some pressure you can you can see there it's a very very wet flow to the nib as well so it keeps up with that flex writing if that's what you want to call it um very very well honestly so 
so if you you can kind of feel when you're when you're going to push it too far but you can get some very very good line variation out of this um, so if that's something that you're looking for I would definitely keep this in mind and I, I don't know if that's the case with all Conklin nibs because the only other nib I've tried besides this one is the Duraflex nib their Omniflex nib whatever but I think it's because of that little crescent moon cut out um, which you can kind of see there's hard to see I, I think that just gives it the extra little oomph that it needs so it can spread the tines and get some nice line variation in there all right onto the conclusion so in conclusion um, I kind of dipped into this a little bit in the dislike section if you can get this for under hundred dollars pick it up um, not even a question just go buy it if if it's over a hundred dollars and you really like the design maybe grab one because again these are discontinued this particular style of them so that's why I wanted to go ahead and get this video put out so that if you're looking at one you can maybe get one I wouldn't pay over $150 for it unless you're just obsessed with it honestly because um, for $150 you can get a Lamy 2000 and in my opinion it's just a much better pen than this is that's not to say this is a bad pen but my preferences lean towards the 2000 a bit that being said, writing with this pen is a very, very enjoyable experience, and it's it's a very, very nice pen overall. The the build quality of it's good. I just wish the fit and finish were better. The materials used feel very sturdy, and I, I don't feel at all that build-wise, I don't feel like this is out of place in the $150 range, but fit and finish, they just didn't pay enough attention to it, and it kind of kills the pen, at least for me. So if you can pick one up for fairly cheap or a really good deal like I got here, jump on it. If you're near Artlight in Atlanta, go check them out. Um, I believe they last time I went there, about a month and a half ago now, um, they did have a stub nib version of this. So if you're in the area, you want one, give them a call, see if they have it, or go in store and check it out. It is very, very much worth the $70. All right, thanks to everyone for tuning in. I hope you all have a wonderful day. If you have any questions about the um, word gauge here, let me know, or any of the other pens that I own. And if you're interested in getting some free stuff, the video before this one, which should be linked at the end of this, um, there's some giveaway information, so you can go check that out. Hope you all have a good day. Bye.